Hello there everyone. Today I will be playing the somewhat new map in BTD Battles, called Snow Castle. Emphasis on the word new, because I know that map's been out for over a month already so technically it isn't new. Anyways, there will be three games here, all sub games arranged in my subscriber chat. So if you really wanted to play with me but you were not in the sub chat, then what are you waiting for, go ahead and join. I'll leave the link to the chat in the description for future videos just as a reminder. So yeah, another thing I noticed was that a handful of people joined the chat and ended up leaving only 20 minutes later. Now I'm not sure what those people were expecting, maybe they were hoping that I would be there and playing sub games 24-7. Unfortunately that is not the case, because I'll most likely only do sub games to make a video out of it, so in other words, not very often, but keep on the lookout and you'll find me on eventually. And that's it for the sub chat, though to add on, it's a little bit of a disappointment that 99% of people who chat and it is a king of the hill player, so it's basically a Koth chat 3.0 at this point. Alright, so let's go back to this gameplay. This first game I'll be playing against Smurf Blade, who to no surprise, is another king of the hill player. Given that I am quite out of shape at the moment, don't be surprised to see those big red flaming skulls at the end of the match. Hopefully the upcoming tournament will get me back into shape however, that is if I can even get past the first round, ha <laughs> ha. This is actually the first time I've played this map, and you could probably tell based on how I placed that cannon at the very beginning of the game. I use the good old cannon, Ninja attack and mortar strategy that actually works quite well on this map, the attack shooter especially because the ring of fire can cover pretty much the entire track. Switching the cannons with the boats also seems like quite a decent idea, because as you know that X4 ability is really damn good. Also, even though there are quite a bit of towers that absolutely wreck face on this map, I'd say it's an intermediate map simply because it's super short and as such there's not much room to defend any rushes. And that's about it for my extremely insightful, deep, in-depth commentary on BTD Battles Theory Crafting and Strategy Carving. I'm sure all of you learned a lot after watching this, maybe enough to go from Chris skill level to the Dark Affliction skill level. And leave a like if you become King of Koth after this, I'll be expecting at least 500 of them. Have a very skillful day.
This year, don't walk. Run! Oh, oh right, snails. To the freeziest. <laughs> Brother. Squeeze. Hello to all viewers. In this episode, I am right back at it to Balloons Monkey City Android. This time playing the mobile exclusive special mission called Engineer Rescue. The goal is to beat a given number of rounds on this swamp-like looking track, the only difference being there are five caged engineers lying on the track, which each one costing 450 money to break open, giving you the ability to place that engineer down and use its upgrades. The twist however, is that balloons like to devour and eat the living shit of whatever they pass through, so once your caged engineer gets hit up by those balloons, simply put, he dies. So yeah. I start off the game by unlocking the first engineer, but decide to sacrifice the second engineer because that hoe ain't worth my four feety dollars. And to be fair, engineers aren't really needed for this mission, but I guess it helps a bit for those medium density balloons and for the first hand experience as well. Speaking of which, I forgot to say that the reward to this mission is the rights to unlock the monkey engineer as well as its corresponding upgrade tower, so it's important that I do this now because engineers are very very strong at the early to mid game levels. Especially the 2-0 upgrade, in my opinion that is one of the best tier 2 upgrades there is available. Now that will be pretty much it for now, if you enjoyed special missions like these, be sure to support them as I'll be uploading a lot more within the near future, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Have a very special day.
If you think you know SpongeBob, what am I gonna say next? Something moronic? Wow. Prepare to be blown out of the water. What is this place? Maybe this guy knows. He looks smart. He's gonna. Hello to all viewers. If you watched my previous video, you would have known that there was a recent update to Balloons TD5 where a bunch of new maps were added. Well in this video, I'll be playing one of those new maps, the hardest one in fact, called Tar Pits. It may actually be the hardest map in all of BTD5, yes, even harder than Main Street and Balloon Honium Lab this map basically has 5 completely separate tracks on its own with each one having balloons that loop around the circle before exiting after completing one rotation. Pretty ridiculous indeed I must say, and even more ridiculous when on hard difficulty. Now before any of you guys say anything, let me just say that this is not a guide or walkthrough of tar pits, as you can tell with me using all those premiums and specialties. And now if you think I'm a pussy for using all these premiums to make the game easier, then you are right. But as far as I know, it's impossible to do this without agents, premiums and specialties, on hard mode that is. So you could say I probably went a little overboard by using double cash, balloon sabotage, monkey tycoon, and boom air specialty, but I guess it's better safe than sorry. Keep in mind it does cost 50 monkey money per attempt. So I can't just play the map over 1000 times to figure out the best strategy with limited premiums, not to mention the amount of time that would take too. And as all of you might know, I am quite the lazy robot. So yeah, enough about all that, let's talk about the strategy I use. Since this track is circular, it's pretty much perfect to use boomerangs on this one, since their boomerangs go around in a full circle. It becomes even better once you have the Boom Air specialty building, where the rangs go around another rotation if it hasn't reached its pop cap. So five of them should be enough to take on the first few levels or so, and I can get my super early farm up because of that, which obviously wouldn't be possible without double cash. Then I get a little sniper monkey to take care of those super fast balloons, since Boomerang's main weakness is just that and I actually tried to get no lives lost to make up for it, so I didn't want any sneaky pink balloons slipping through my defense. Also one thing to note about this map is that the middle portion is filled with water, which makes this map pretty ideal for boats. In fact it's crucial to use them, as their long range makes it so that it can reach to all five tracks at once, and is probably the only tower that can, barring the ones with infinite range and super monkeys which you won't really use until round 50 or so. And that's about all I'll talk about for now. Let me just repeat, don't come into this video expecting a no lives lost walkthrough without premiums and that shit, this is simply just some gameplay showcasing the newest extreme map. With that being said hopefully you did enjoy the video nonetheless. Have a marvelous day.
Hey everyone! Since I pretty much covered most to all of the gameplay aspects in Clicker Heroes, I figured I could just do a little video showing you some of the hidden secrets. When their world is in danger, oh, aren't you overreacting? I hope you like leather. They'll come to ours. What is this place? Uh -oh. This year. Get ready for it. That's so good. Interrupting dolphins. It's time for it. Time for it. True love. Where have you been all my life? Six pack abs and SpongeBob in 3D. You're beautiful. The SpongeBob. Will you stop that? The SpongeBob movie. Sponge out of water. Hello, everyone. And today we're back with some more BTD Battles Tournament action, this time the third out of four series against a guy called Flawlessly. As with the first two people I faced, Flawlessly is of course very very good, at one point also holding the throne for King of the Hill, so yet again I will have my hands full for this one. So yeah. I believe I forgot to mention this in the other tournament videos. But the top two players in each bracket get to move on to round three, where there will be only eight people remaining at that point. So as for my bracket, Mo Money will already be advancing to round three since he beat every single person in my bracket, which leaves the final spot to toss up between me and the other three players. As you saw, I already beat Smurf Blade. So if I can come up with a series win versus flawlessly then my chances of moving on will be really damn good. The other player in my bracket is Chris, also known as Super John Bombo, whose series I haven't shown to you guys yet, but if you follow his big ass channel then you probably already know the outcome of that series, since he already uploaded it. Alrighty then, I think that is all there is to say about the brackets and all that shit. So let us talk about this current series shall we? Well, for the billionth time, the starting map for round 2 is Snowy Castle, and to no surprise I'm using the overly meta strategy of Tack, Ninja, Boat and Mortar. Go ahead and read the chat between me and Flawlessly, because I guarantee you will get a chuckle out of it at some point, granted you weren't programmed to have a sense of humor. I know I wasn't. Hence why I only ever have one tone in these commentaries. Okay, I know this commentary is pretty damn short and all, but I'm going to have to end it here right now because the children in the basement are being real feisty at the moment, and I can only do these commentaries in one sitting otherwise I will forget my train of thought. With that said, watch until the end to see who comes victorious. I won't bother asking you guys to like the video. Because unless I make a rant about begging for likes then I will never get a shit ton of them. Let's hope reverse psychology works here. Have a wacky day.
It all starts with your family name. And now to commemorate World War I, Ancestry can help you discover your proud past with millions of wartime records. Why hello there everyone. If you've clicked on this video you are probably very thirsty for another one of my BTD Battles Tournament videos, and I've got them laid out here right for you. This time we're up against Smurf Blade, yet again a very good player to say the least. If I recall correctly, he actually held the throne for King of the Hill at one point, although for only a short while. So who will come out victorious, Smurf Blade? or the rusty robot that was once at the very top of the hill. Well you'll have to watch to the end to find out, or as I said before, you can be a rebel and skip right to the end. But what's the fun in that, I guarantee you guys these matches will be quite entertaining, so you don't want to miss out. Because spoiler alert, these games don't go that far into late game, so you won't have to suffer through those grueling rounds 25 to 40, where nothing happens except both players sending ZOMGs and infinitely mortar stalling them. So yeah. In other news, it has recently come to my attention that some other YouTube channel has been using the same voice as me. But it's not just some ordinary channel, it is actually bigger and better. And a lot more controversial. It's got something to do with that Illuminati shit. Which is quite ironic considering I was just talking about that in my previous video. I'll leave it to you YouTube detectives to find out what channel I am talking about, but it shouldn't be too hard to find. Now off to Picnus aside, let's go back to this game, where some real shit has gone down. I don't know if the first game is over yet, so I'll just play it safe and talk about different shit. Well if you were paying attention to the video before, You'll notice that I got chunked in lives real hard because of the regrow lead and zebra rush on round 11. Nobody expects such a rush, or maybe it's just me since I haven't played enough for someone to do that to me. Well you live and you learned I guess, it was a smart rush by Smurf Blade because I did not have a ring of fire up at the time, but rather a bunch of boats and a mortar. Anyways the first game is sure to be over now, and surprisingly enough, I won the first game with a snake round 18 regrow Moab. He would never expect such a rush like that, especially when I tell him I am going to send him one which will make him think I am just joking around. Well now that everyone knows my secret strategy I guess I'll just keep my mouth shut and end the commentary real quick. Again, if you enjoyed or just simply watching this, consider leaving a like on this video. For every one of my videos you like, one less child dies of starvation. Together we can stop this. Have a faithful day.